Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of discussion about the solar panel wiring on the Adria Twin, um, about the original wiring to the NDS um, solar controller, which most of you would have underneath the driver's seat, and how it's wired into the EBL. Purely because um, I got asked a question not long ago on a Facebook group about the wiring where someone connected it up slightly wrong, um, and it's worth pointing out how you can rewire it in if you want to put a new Victron controller in or in if you have to replace it with any other solar controller um, how the wiring is done and if any of you don't really know if any of you have got a, an Adria Twin and don't know about it on Facebook there is an Adria Twin Facebook group which is an excellent place to go to to get um, information about these vans um, got quite a lot of people on it now um, it's worth joining because there's lots of discussions about problems that you might come across with the van or if you're out and about um, away on holiday and you have a problem you can post your question on there and you probably get an answer within a few seconds really and um, there's quite a lot of members on there who know quite a bit about these vans so it's well worth going over to Facebook and joining the Adria Twin Facebook group. Right so first thing I'm going to talk about is the wiring from your NDS solar controller to your um, EDL or EBL 211 distribution box um, you'll have a, a cable like this um, which plugs this plugs into the EBL um, and the other end goes into the NDS and I'll show you where this is under the seat in a minute um, but the most important thing we need to look at is that this has three two positive cables and a negative and the two positive cables on this plug are not both um, connected to the same batteries. One of them is connected to your engine battery, your starter battery, and the other one's connected to your leisure battery. Because the NDS controller will charge both starter and leisure batteries. So you can't connect these two batteries together, these two cables together. If you do, you're bypassing the whole charging circuit of the um, EBL, and it can be quite serious to your wiring on your van or your EBL when you start running the van and starting your engines and I'll explain that in a minute and as you can see this end's got the two red cables and black you see I've taped up one end there and the end that I've taped up here is the starter battery and you see the one with the blue wire blue bit of insulation around it that's your um, leisure battery the van the, the um, living area battery and when you're looking at this pin this plug the black cable there is pin number one the center cable, pin number two, is your vehicle battery. And the end one, which again has got the blue tape on it, is your leisure environmental um, battery. That's pin number three. Now it might not have blue tape on yours, so you might have to either continuity check or chase it through this insula uh, insulation to be able to find what end's connected to what end for the other end. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll just show you under the seat and I'll go through this a bit more. Right, so looking under the seat here now, you can see this plug here, this is where the cable would have plugged in for your solar controller. Mine's been taken out because I haven't got it anymore because um, I've, I've wired in a Victron controller. Um, I've wired my Victron controller to go directly to the batteries rather than going through this device. But if you want to put a Victron controller here, a small one here, um, and wire it into the solar panel and then wire it through here, it, you'll be using the plug that plugs into here to go into the Victron controller. And you just need to remember that the black cable can go into the, the negative on the Victron controller for the battery and the positive cable with the blue tape which is pin number three will be the one that you connect into the Victron controller pin number two you tape up and don't use unless you have a controller that can do starter battery and then pin number two goes to the one that says starter battery and like I say it's quite important that we do that and looking over at this side you can see we've got two cables at the top here with blue tape on it pins number one and two I believe pins number one and two hopefully this comes out because it's dark these two cables are both paralleled up going to your leisure battery and they're I think I believe four mil so it's eight mil cables really running and the two in below that pins three and four which I've disconnected because I'm not running the charging circuit that's for another part of the wiring for B2B um, these would have been your starter batteries so you can see again they're doubled up paralleled quite thick cables and then you've got your negatives but down here along these pins and I don't know exactly what one that look at the diagram we go through this in a minute there's another cable called your D plus cable um, and then another one from your um, starter battery just for the fridge and stuff and I think it's quite a small cable uh, probably a 1.5 mil cable so you can see the difference in size cable and in a minute I'm going to explain the dangers of winding up the, these two wires together 
that go into the solar panel bypassing the charging circuit and what could happen if you do that so I'll go over that in a, a few minutes on a wiring diagram rather than doing it here so you can see it Right, so this is my solar controller because I've got a bigger one as well. Um, I've put it in the back here, but attached to the wood, which most people you might have seen in my previous videos. Um, if you had a smaller one, I've seen some people put it in the other side under the compartment. But the reason why I'm bringing you back around here, a um, couple of reasons. So your battery terminals, yeah, for your Victron, if you're using a Victron, obviously you've got your positive and negative. So the positive will be the one with that blue tape, pin number three, will go into your positive and negative will be the black wire. And then um, the other wire you tape up, like I said previously. Um, for your PV, which is your solar panel side, the NDS only has a positive going into the NDS. The negative's hidden around the back of the van, around the back part where I am now, the back seat. What you need to do, and I can't show you because I've already done mine, but this is the red payable from the solar panel. When you take it off your NDS, and I'll show you a picture, it'll have a little tiny white tag on it, which looks like a sun. So that's your positive wire for your from your solar panel. What you need to do is chase this wire back underneath the seat, yeah, until you get to this point here where you find a bit of conduit going underground, underneath the seating area. And in this conduit, you can see you've got a black cable coming out of it as well. Yeah, this black cable is your negative for your from your solar panels. And if you chase this negative back under the seats here, you'll find a little tiny chocolate block, like a, a terminal block, block, block with loads of negatives in it, where you can disconnect this negative. Make sure you keep all the other negatives in that block all nice and tight. You just want to take this one out. And then you have your positive and negatives yeah, from your solar panel, which will then go straight into your Victron controller. Now I've got an isolator put in, but some people don't bother and they just go straight into there with it. Now the reasons why you can't really leave that negative still in that chocolate block is because some of these controllers work slightly different to others and they need that positive and negative from the solar panel. Um, I believe the NDS doesn't because it bypasses the negative straight through but these, this one, these ones I think believe they do because I've seen some of them not work without it and that's be purely because sometimes they have an isolation between the negatives and the positives internally which is switched on and off um, when the solar is powerful enough to charge your batteries. So they are both um, double pole isolation really. So they need both of them in there and it won't switch on without them. So anyway, that's the wiring. Hopefully that's quite understandable. Pull your cables through from your solar panel, find it in that conduit. That's your two positive and negatives that you need for your Victron. And for the battery side, remember that you're only using pin three if you're going into your NDS. Alternatively, take that cable out of the NDS completely run some bigger cables like these 16 mil cables straight underneath the seat to your battery connect it in directly to your battery via a fuse um, and in that way you're taking out your nds anyway and you're not worried about that oh your, your um, e ebl sorry anyway i'll go over the wiring diagram now and explain why i'm bringing this up uh, on this video vlog right guys so this is the wiring diagram for the ebl that we've got on the new newer vans it's the ebl 211 um, I'll go over some bits of this to explain why we can't join these wires up so hopefully it becomes clear and I've also coloured in all the wires so it makes it a little bit easier to seal. Now down the bottom here um, is your solar panel, this is the solar controller, sorry this is the NDS that you've probably got on your vans and you can see you've got your three wires there, um, you can see it's got pins one, two at the bottom and three at the top so they're not in order and you can see pin one here goes out to this little bit black line down the bottom which means it's a negative wire and if you followed it all the way up to here it says up here that it's a negative wire for the battery from your leisure battery so that's pin one so that's how you can recognize what pin one is and on your EBL if you look at the actual EBL itself it has actually got pin one written at the bottom of that plug so pin two which it says down here SB which is your starter battery abbreviation if you follow that up this um, green cable up here, this one's for your fridge because it powers the fridge when your engine's running, and then this one comes up here to your plus start battery. Yeah, and then up here it goes up to the charging circuit. So this is switched on when you switch your mains on. This comes in, and the, your mains electric hookup charges your start battery, and then from the solar panel when you're on solar, it comes up here and charges your start battery. Now these pins here, the small ones, are the small cables I've shown you. So these will be probably about 1.5. Uh, millimeter cable I expect I've not actually physically seen it but it's only taking a 2.5 amps it says there but it's quite a low 
power supply compared to the actual start uh, charging of your vehicle uh, battery when your engine's running, which I'll show you in a minute. And pin three, it says WB. I don't know what WB means actually, abbreviation wise, but this is your leisure battery charging. So this is from the solar charger. Goes through this 15 amp fuse, which is on the front of your um, of your EBL. Follow up this red cable up here, straight out through here for a 30 amp amp fuse, and these are your two cables here, which I showed you, the four millimeter cables going off to your leisure battery. So that's how that charges up your leisure battery, and the other one charges up your vehicle battery. And the reasons really, if you connect them together, you'll be bypassing what's called the charging circuit. Now I'm just going to show you a little basic charging circuit before I go over that. So if you imagine this is a charging circuit, and it's similar to, they all work, apart from a few have smart chargers, which I'll explain, but most of them look like this. So this is your engine battery over here, called the start battery. And this is your leisure battery over here, um, which is in your living in, in quarters, which supplies everything in your van. So what normally happens is when you switch your ignition on, so this one then makes up here, it puts a 12 volt power supply, your ignition power supply, called D plus onto this relay here, which makes this contact and it connects both of these batteries together so that they're fully connected together now, like this. So now that this wire is connected, to, this contact is connected together, both of these batteries will charge at the same sort of rate. Um, your alternator will be filling, putting power into your start battery and that will be feeding across to your leisure battery. Now there are some different ones that have smart relay connections and I'm not sure where the EBL has got this in it because it doesn't show you on the circuit diagram. Um, but some of them detect whether your starter battery is low and charge that first, then it brings in this relay to charge this. But basically it's the same sort of thing. B to B's are slightly different and if you fit them that, that that's a totally different ball game. But this is how the bands work with this EBL. They just pull in this relay and I'll show you that in a minute. And so you start you're connecting up these two wires together and they're the big cables, they're the um, two parallel cables, the two four mil cables, so they're quite heavy duty cables really, to be able to take the charging current. The other thing this relay does is when you turn the ignition on, this is when the ignition is in the, I think it's the second point of the ignition. When you turn around to crank your engine on, so you crank that starter motor on, this D plus is taken away. This relay opens up because your starter motor takes hundreds of amps to start that engine over. And that needs to come from this starter battery. The reason why we have starter batteries, they're totally different design batteries to leisure batteries. They only start a design to take a high cranking current for starting your engine. So when you go start your engine, this contact opens so you're not putting hundreds of amps down through these leisure battery cables, damaging your leisure battery, possibly, which it will do over time, or even burning out cables or crimps, especially crimps, because they're, they're, they're the most weakest part of the circuit. Um, if you're putting, say, 100 odd amps for your starter to start your engine, and you have this relay or these two cables connected together, um, it will parallel pull the current and it'll probably try and pull at least 50 amps down this cable way over what we should do hopefully it should blow the fuse but a 50 amps and a 30 amp fuse would take at least probably for 60 seconds to 90 seconds to blow um, enough time to do damage to the rest of your circuitry in, in your van um, so that's the reason why this relay is here d plus turn brings it in when your ignition's on so you can charge um, when you go to crank your turn your engine on this opens up to stop any bad currents going back from your leisure battery and when you're on campsite this opens up so that you're not putting any power up your starter battery and lower your start battery. That's the other third thing this is for. If you don't open this relay and disconnect these batteries, when you're on site, you're going to be draining your starter battery as much as your leisure battery. And then when you go to uh, home and you want to start your engine again, you've got a dead starter battery and you can't get off site. So hopefully that explains all this bit for anyone that doesn't understand how that works, for the basics of it. It's quite basic. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But going back to our circuit diagram now, on here, we have the relay here called the battery cutoff relay. And you can see the 30 amp, the big cables here and the red one, go down to one side of this cutoff relay. And the blue cable here coming out here is what says starter plus battery, 30 amp. This is your 8 mil, 2 mil, the two parallel duct cables going out. So this, these two cables here, going back to this drawing, are this one here and this one here connecting up to this relay, which is this relay here. And then this relay, if you follow out this little cable here, I think I haven't colored this in, just follow it straight out. Sorry, the other way around. And this one here, that one is a negative. If you, this one here, if you pull it out here and go up, 
it shows you there is a D plus point. That's your D plus ignition cable coming in to energize that relay, pull this in and connect these two batteries together. And then you're charging, and then when you start your engine, it disconnects that cable, so that relay opens up so you don't pull any currents through there, there for starting your engine. And when you're on site, this D plus is off because your ignition's off, and this is open so you're not connecting the two batteries together. So that's how this works. So if you can imagine now this red cable to stand here on pin three, you now connect that to pin two because you've connected the two cables together. You've now bypassed this relay because your power there is going out through pin three, up through pin two, up this cable here and out to your starter battery through there. And this one's not designed to take a charging current from your engine. But if you're pulling, um, especially if you have a lithium battery, trying to pull up to 20 amps or more, it's going to be going down through here. Plus, when you go to start your engine, because this you bypass this, your power will come down through this red cut, cut power here. It'll go out through here, short out into pin two because you're connecting together. It'll go back up through here and back to the start battery. Um, and then when you're on site, if you haven't blown that fuse, your start battery is going to be discharging through your ledger battery because again, you bypassed this relay. Um, so I think that's it really. I'm hoping uh, that's clear enough. I mean, comment below if I've missed anything there, but that is basically the charging circuit for the vehicle charging. Yeah, so just to know that when you change your solar panel, you can't connect these two cables together um, from what I can see on this wiring diagram. Um, the only other things you've got on here then, if you want to know, is that this starter battery green cable that's coming in, which is for solar charging out, um, when you start your engine, this um, relay here, sorry, the refrigeration one, comes also off your D plus, comes in, and that switches over the fridge from being supplied by your ledger battery to being supplied by this green one, which is your starter engine. So when your engine's starting, your fridge is supplied by your engine, your alternator, rather than through your ledger battery. So that's one thing to be in, in, if you're interested in. Um, and the other one is your awning light. Again, that's energized when you start your engine. So it opens up this contact here, you can't really see it properly, and it switches off your awning lights because you can't have awning lights, external white lights on the vehicle while you're driving. Um, and lastly, up here is your charging relay. When you switch your mains on, this is your 240 volt mains into here, the red cable through this 20 amp fuse charges up your leisure battery. And then it has another supply down here to this relay that then puts this relay, turns this relay on and it supplies your starter battery so your engine battery through this green cable to charge it off the mains and it's got a little diode here to stop you getting any back feed into the here this is exactly the same what i say about if you bypass this and you bypass this relay you'll discharge your starter battery yeah so that's what i have this diode in to prevent that if you've got that relay down and there's say a blowing fuse here or something it's just to protect you discharging your leisure battery oh sorry your vehicle battery Right, anyway, hopefully that's of some use to you. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you think that's any good. Um, I'm happy to comment on bits and talk about this. Um, and like I said earlier, on the Facebook group, there's a, a really good group there where you can find out lots of information about anything on the bands. Um, this was demonstrating just because someone um, saying about this and, and saying about what cables do what and stuff and connecting up together. Um, and I thought it's worth pointing out because when I did my upgrade and I showed you a vlog on the upgrade I didn't actually go through um, this side of it I just said I disconnected it and, and I run uh, this is the reason another reason why I run straight through to the battery um, from my solar controller there's no reason to go through the EBL it's, it's easier to go straight to the battery and bypass all this because it, it doesn't do anything really apart from go for a 15 amp fuse which I didn't need on a 30 amp controller so um, that's the reason why I did that Anyway, I'll try and update some more videos later on. Um, probably won't be doing any more solar because I think I've done this to death now. Um, we've got a few other projects coming along. We're still waiting for my battery at the moment. Um, not sure how long that's going to take to get here. It's a bit of a slow one, that one. Anyway, cheers. Thanks. See you next time.